Hello, I'd like to welcome you to another Tailgate Thursday brought to you by Frontier Precision. My name is Mel Philbrook and I'm the Geospatial Technical Account Manager here at Frontier Precision. My name's Adam Bridges. I'm the Geospatial Sales Rep based here in Boise, Idaho. You know, Mel, I'm talking to a lot of customers having UHF radio issues, whether it's range or their signal being stomped on. I just wonder if there's a way we can help uh, find a better, better solution. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Adam. Um, after the FCC required narrow banding happened in 2013, a lot of folks don't realize that um, we lost half our bandwidth. We went from a 25 foot lane to a 12 and a half foot lane, but we've also increased our GPS constellations from GPS to now GPS GLONASS and now GPS GLONASS in Galileo. And so by throwing now multiple channels of GNSS down a half the size pipe, you could understand that there's lots of issues using UHF. So you've now lost your range and you have more RTK users than we had in the early days in the 90s and then mid 90s when RTK came out. So what we're here to talk about today is the Intuicom Bridge X. The Bridge X has uh, many things that it can do, but during today's tailgate, we're just gonna be focused on one tremendous advantage that's being overlooked about the Intuicom Bridge X, and that's using it as a base socket or what I would call using it as an internet radio. Many folks have already who have are already using UHF already have all the cables and batteries necessary to uh, with an SAE connector. When you buy this Bridge X, this cable plug-in right here is just a standard Lima Zero shell that's already being used by your Trimble gear and those TDL radios. All you're gonna to need to do is plug in the same cable you already had, which probably was a splitter that had an SA adapter. The radio already comes with this, this, and you'll be able to have it plugged into power by using SAE. And then also run, ran directly to your mobile base and use this as an ethernet radio or what I call an internet radio. Once you're broadcasting CMRX, just like you normally would do, instead of going out a radio via UHF, you'll be going over a static IP. That's when you buy this device, you'll get a static IP assigned and you'll also then assign a port. We usually use 5018. You can stay tuned for that. We're gonna do a complete tech talk on the setup of the web UI on the Atuacom bridge, and then also uh, how to set it up in Trimble Access as a VRS rover. But then your corrections now are secured going over the internet directly to your rover. That means you'll have increased performance on your rover and you'll have using uh, like an R10-2 or a Trimble R12 that's using precision base measurements, you're able to go further because you don't have the limitation of the UHF radio range limitations that you traditionally had, and you'll be able to do things more secure. So that's pretty much this Intuicom bridge in the way that we're trying to talk about today in this tailgate. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's go talk to a customer, see how they're using it. Yeah, that sounds great, Adam. Let's go talk to a customer. Hi, I'm Mel Philbrook with Frontier Precision. I'm out here with Craig with Four Rivers Surveying, a surveyor here in Idaho, to discuss a little bit about the Intuacom RTK bridge. I'll let Craig introduce himself here. And Hi, I'm Craig McCullough, Four Rivers Surveying. Uh, we cover many states, and uh, Mel turned us on to this, uh, I'll call it the bridge. And uh, we uh, uh, want to talk a little bit today about uh, uh, why we use the bridge and the applications that we use the bridge for and why we love it. Yeah, so Craig uh, originally, uh, like many customers, 
after the narrow banding on uh, UHF radios have had a lot of um, decrease in radio range and, and other radio issues. So, um, Craig, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the uh, how you've integrated the two Com Marti bridge for your applications? Uh, our our projects, most all of our projects, are large scale projects. This one right here is kind of a medium. The one we're on today is kind of a medium sized project, but. I originally bought the bridge uh, after Mel explained to me what its capabilities were for um, long distance. Um, other surveyors were using it for um, to get around being walked on from the normal radio, but we wanted it for the application of being able to reach in long distances. We had a project that was about 1,500 square miles of control network, and we needed to uh, to be able to reach everything that we could, and uh, this thing will do that. Uh, we had a one particular shot that we uh, got to between control points that was a little over 36 miles, and uh, we were able to maintain the precision and accuracy we're wanting, and we had a 300 or vertical. I was very happy at three. 36 miles. That is one one of the reasons that we like it. Um, this this project that we are on right here, we started uh, three or four years ago, and our base is sitting on a on a, a control point here that we used to use our conventional base, um, and we would to to cover this project we had at least about four bases to get everything covered on this project this one now we can do from with the bridge we can do from this one site one control point any of the any of the four control points we could do it all from one using the bridge that is another advantage uh, another advantage is it doesn't uh, suck as much power from a battery as as the conventional HPB style of uh, radio. Um, yeah, Craig. So, um, just so folks know, um, this this is a, a typical mobile base setup. It's using the same wiring system that they used to use for their TDL 450, and all they had to do is swap out and plug into this Intuicom RTK bridge, and and use the same battery source that has an SAA connector and. Um, and honestly, you're still able to use the same survey style, which was using mm -hmm. an external radio. So it's pretty much been plug and play for you. Correct? It has been, yes. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of setup from you and help that uh, we got us up and going, and and we we did really really well on that uh, that project I was telling you about. We could have done it the other way. We could have done it with Opus, but this was gave us an ability to do it in in days instead of multiple weeks yep and one last uh thing that i like to uh that craig brought up that i um, um is a good point craig why don't you explain we we're in the uh we're in a network and there's plenty of places where um i get questions by uh customers hey well we're we have a vrs network um whether it's paid or free why would i need this bridge and, and do it over cellular you, you brought up yesterday it was a very good point that sometimes you're running on the outskirts of a network or there's some areas and some network providers that you're maybe in an area of a deformation or high movement, and um, you would prefer to mount to a single base anyways. Here, you're, um, why don't you explain uh, what's going on here? That is exactly right. Our location right here, we are right on the edge of, a, uh, of the, the network, the VRS network. And our precisions, the repeatability is lacking and uh, for uh, our boundary work that we do we want to we want to set up on a base and uh, we want to uh, to keep our precisions up uh, it's it the it, being right on the edge like this it's just doesn't give us the quality that we really really want to get our boundary work done yeah so um thank you for uh watching this uh tailgate on uh <laughs> the Intuacom RTG bridge and thanks uh, and shout out to Craig and
Four Rivers Surveying for uh, um, telling us a little bit about uh, the, uh, how they're using it. And then also I want to give a plug, a shout out to all those U.S. Army surveyors. Craig's one and, uh, and there's a lot more out there. Um, thank you again for watching uh, this tailgate by Frontier Precision.